industry news, machine reviews, interviews, and a lot more right here on the Weld Like Baza podcast. Welcome to episode 11 of the Weld Like Baza podcast. This is a micro segment, The Specialist. This week's show is brought to you by EWM High Tech Welding Equipment and SWP. If you ever listen to this podcast without actually knowing me personally, you may be thinking that this is just another guy fed up with working, wanting to be a digital creator or something. Well, you couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is, the person that you're listening to, and soon the person that you're going to be watching at the same time as well, well, that's me, right? I am that person. In my lifetime, I have always had a massive love and knowledge of radio and broadcast. I've also always been great at delivering the facts and the story too. All I've done here is package everything together. See, at eight years old, I was building those disco lights with my dad, the ones that we spoke about in earlier podcasts. Why did dad build disco lights? Well, he wanted to build and design his own circuit boards. This was an ideal way to learn. When I was 14, he built me a small transmitter. For my woodworking exam at school, I built some disco lights. In metalwork, I built some zigzag speaker stands. We weren't allowed to weld in class, so I did it on my lunchtime with a Bantam stick welder that was hidden in the tech stores at school. I was also part of the show group, as well as drumming for the show, I'd rig the lights and the sound, help build the sets, do the get-ins and get-outs. When I left school, I went straight to college. Again, we spoke about this on previous shows. I studied engineering, mechanical, electrical and electronic. I also passed all my exams with the highest possible grade of that time. I then went on to pass my exams on ozone-depleting gases and the handling of them. Dad and myself went back to college together to take our 16th edition. I then did my gas inspector's qualification, also known as CP7 qualification. That's where I'm at Andy Lomax. We actually talked more about life and parties uh, on our practical exam than we did the gas testing itself. Can you believe? Hey up, Andy. I've studied at Hypertherm with top engineers from Hypertherm itself, as well as meeting independent, worldly, time-served engineers. One of which was Garan, a wicked bloke with an even better sense of humour. Despite living and working in Switzerland, he lived and worked in the UK for a while at the Welding Torch Company, also known as WTC. I now have the relevant LEV qualifications I require for servicing and testing and advising on fume extraction for the welding industry. I've installed such systems on my own at installations around the UK and they have been signed off by myself as well as the manufacturers. I've learned about most types of welding equipment and cutting equipment as an engineer. I've retrofitted plasma systems, rebuilt automation systems, built along with my dad bespoke automation welding systems and reconditioned more welding machines than I've had dinners, especially lately. What I'm getting at is this. I speak as a human and an engineer. I know what I do and I know what does what and I know what does what and why. And that's not from reading the brochure or the manual. It's from getting dirty, but also being an actual qualified engineer. Ask my friend Alan at EWM. Ask him, does Barry strip down a machine into pieces before he sells it? He won't lie to you. Ask Joe from Bowler, and I will clarify now, I do not sell Bowler machines. But ask him, Joe, does Barry strip machines down before he even welds with them? Joe won't lie to you. Ask Nick from Fronius. Nick, have you seen Barry take a brand new machine out of a box and strip it down into a million pieces? He'll tell you, yes, I've witnessed it with my own eyes. Listening back to conversations with Mark from Pullman Instruments regarding calibration. Give him a call, Mark. Does Barry know what he's doing when it comes to calibration? What I'm getting at is... If I sell something or I do something, I do it right, and I'm behind it 110%. 
I'm an expert, an actual time-served engineer dedicated to the welding industry with qualifications and experience to back it all up. I'm currently working through my welding metallurgy course as well as learning code too, which I do need for new software for automation systems. I won't tell you what I don't know, but if you ask me, I will help you with what I do. Which brings me to this next segment. Last week, early one morning in the office, the phone rings. I answered and was greeted by a high-rate lad claiming to be an engineer. And it went a little bit like this. Can I speak with service? And I replied, well, I can help you. I'm working on an EWM Alpha Q551 and I can't get it to calibrate on volts. So I replied, can I ask where you got my number from? Yeah, the EWM website. You're classed as an authorised service partner. Okay. So, let me just set the scene. This is an engineer who... I know the company they work for calibrate machines cheaper than I do, who is working on a machine that obviously that particular engineer doesn't know much about, and they're calling me at 7.45 in the morning for help. You can only imagine what I was thinking, right? Well... My response went something like this. Is the voltage out by a consistent value? Is it linear or does it appear to be logarithmic? Uh, phone goes quiet. He responded, I just want to get this machine calibrated. My response again was, okay, so you need to enter the menu system of the machine. Let me talk you through that. Phone goes quiet. There's no digital display on this. I can't enter the menu. Ultimately, I gave him a little bit of a speaking to, told him what I believed the problem potentially could be and what he needed to check first. The engineer wasn't willing to go into that menu system and told me he was going to pass that machine as calibrated without calibrating it on volts. I won't go on, but I think you get the point. Nonetheless, it completely kickstarted my day the wrong way. Somebody charging less, claiming they know as much, if not more, and obviously, well, I'll leave that for the comments section on Spotify, right? In another note, a customer recently said to me that a world-renowned, tried and tested water-cooled MIG torch was unfit for purpose because the operator had smashed the swan neck on the workpiece and the ceramic gas diffuser inside had broken. I tried to explain and went into depth about the particular problem here. At this point, I sometimes feel it's better to just walk away. Even if times are quiet or work isn't as busy as you would like it to be, me, personally, I need to walk away. If you get hung up trying to prove your point or your worth, I honestly feel you just dilute your energy supplies and dilute your own get up and go. What you sometimes see in a recession or harder times is people diverse into new sectors and I'm all for that. But you find people who jump into situations that really shouldn't be in those situations. Another example of change in hard times is the fight to dominate what's sometimes referred to in the industry as the fighting brand. This is where manufacturers and wholesalers feel they are missing out on sales. Because of this, they often think that maybe the price of a machine or a product, for this example, let's just say welding wire or welding consumables, is too expensive or high-end. They then introduce cheaper products to try and compete in a marketplace. All this does most of the time is cause the mis-selling of equipment and or consumables. The customer soon outgrows the machines that they buy at the cheaper price. Trust me, I have witnessed this and seen this 100,000 times if not more. And if the customer goes down to cheaper consumables and buying things on price, quite often end up with problems. Consumables not feeding properly, not welding the same as other products. Then, ultimately, stocks run low and they can't get that product again anyway. This is where I'm different. 
I stick to my guns on quality. After all, you can sell something that's quality as quality forever, but you can only sell something that's of a lesser quality as a higher quality product once. After that, you usually find yourself on the ropes and getting bitten in the ass. It's as simple as that. I think my final comment today on this short podcast is this. Just because I make it look easy doesn't mean it is. This week's shout out goes to Mark Taylor. Mark went above and beyond last Friday afternoon when I felt the world had already finished for that hot up and coming weekend. Mark has dealt with me and my dad for years and years and on Friday he made it happen. Yeah, I put Mark under pressure, but he's going to make sure that I can build the products that I need to build this week to get my customer out of the predicament that they are in. The man did great. Well done, Mark, and thanks for putting in that extra effort. My name is Bazza. This is the Weld Like Bazza podcast. MS Welding, welding equipment repair specialist the number one welding solution provider. Find us at mswelding.co.uk. Find out more about the podcast at wildlightbazza.co.uk. I'll see you soon. Industry news, machine reviews, interviews, and a lot more right here on the Wild Like Bazza podcast. The Wild Like Bazza podcast is sponsored by MS Welding, the number one welding solution provider, mswelding.co.uk.